<laughs> Second she lets it go, and then <laughs> Chloe Grace to Twitter. <laughs> through every 28 days or so in response to changing hormone levels and in coordination with the ovarian cycle. The shedding of the functional layer is triggered when the progesterone and estrogens that were being produced by the corpus luteum start to drop, about 10 days after ovulation. This phase lasts about five days. Meanwhile, the FSH and LH released from the anterior pituitary start to rise again, stimulating the next round of follicles which begin to make estrogen. This heralds the start of phase two of the menstrual cycle. Female facial preferences change during the menstrual cycle in order to increase life likelihood of a successful pregnancy. Female attraction to masculine features is strongest when they are uh, most fertile, which is during the follicular phase of their menstrual cycle, when estrogen and testosterone levels are high. There are also studies that show that preferences for masculine features increases when female salivary testosterone levels are high. Female attraction to masculine features during high risks of conception um, functions to increase the health of potential offspring. Facial attractiveness is way more than just whether or not somebody is hot or not. Facial attractiveness has to do with a variety of characteristics, ranging from the width of someone's face to the distance between their eyes, the distance between their nose and their mouth. Let's look at Keith with a stronger jawline, which is a very strong signal of reproductive health. Speaking of this idea, we can ask ourselves, how do hormonal contraceptives affect mate selection? Well, since the daily use of the oral contraceptive pill mimics the hormonal states of pregnancy, this results in changes in female mate selection. What does this mean? Contrast with normally cycling females, pill users show less preferences for facial and vocal masculinity, whereas non-pill users prefer more masculine mate qualities when they are most fertile, such as face shape, scent, and MHC dissimilarity. Pill users favor less symmetrical, less masculine, and less MHC dissimilar men. In general, this means that female pill users tend to prefer mates who are likely to be better child raisers, i.e. better fathers, than attractive mates. However, this begs the question, how does female mate selection change after quitting the pill? Go. And that brings us to effects of the menstrual cycle on sex drive. Sex steroid hormones also have an apparent impact on female sexual drive. In a study conducted here at UCSB at the lab of Professor James Roney, results of daily surveys taken by female undergraduate students combined with assays of hormone samples revealed a few interesting connections. Peaks in estradiol predicted future peaks in sexual desire. If the women surveyed experienced a peak in estradiol during the late follicular phase, they were more likely to initiate and have sex two days later when they were ovulating. This time lag was a consistent pattern found in the study. This may indicate that sex steroid hormones affect behavior via genomic changes. Progesterone was found to have a negative correlation with sexual desire. As progesterone levels increase, sexual desire decreases. This accounts for an observed drop in sexual behavior and desire post ovulation and during the luteal phase. Estradiol and progesterone are evidently counterbalances to female sexual desire increasing it during mid-cycle peaks in estradiol and diminishing it late in the cycle. Interestingly enough, the study found null effects of testosterone on female sexual desire. Other studies have shown that sexual desire is restored in women who undergo hormonal replacement therapy that includes testosterone. This increase may be accounted for by the conversion of testosterone to estradiol in the body. Though this study exclusively focused on an undergraduate female population, it does point to sexual behavior in women potentially following a cyclic pattern that depends on the fluctuating levels of estrogens in the body. Another factor that affects sexual behavior in women is decreasing levels of estrogen with age. They say beauty is in the eye of the beholder, meaning beauty is purely subjective. However, studies show particular physical features in women are considered more attractive to men and may even be cues for fertility. One finding showed that women with larger breasts and a smaller waist to hip ratio had higher levels of progesterone and estradiol concentrations in their saliva, and that men tend to prefer this figure as well as favoring more feminine looking faces, higher voice pitch, which is also related to higher estradiol concentrations. Oh hey, didn't see you there. Now let's talk about mate seeking behavior in males and why your bio makes me go. 
What determines when and toward whom someone will direct romantic interests? There is much literature that focuses on the physical or psychological traits that affect sexual attraction, but have you ever thought about the relatively subtle yet sexy processes that occur at fundamental levels of biology? Those at Florida State University did and took advantage of a credits of credit seeking undergrads ages 18 to 23 to participate in a study involving olfactory cues and biological related processes occurring at men in men. In this study, the undergraduate men were asked to provide a saliva sample prior to the start of the experiment. Smelling this. This allowed for researchers to assess a baseline level of testosterone for men in the study. The next part of the study involved undergraduate men smelling two sets of t-shirts. Shirts worn by women during ovulation and far from ovulation. Then after 15 minutes from the last good old sniff for that shirt, they were asked to provide another saliva sample. The results showed that there was a significant increase in testosterone levels between those who smelled shirts worn by women during ovulation than those who were farther away from ovulation. Now what does that mean? Previous studies show a correlation between higher levels of testosterone and increased mate-seeking behavior in men. So this study suggests that the mere scent of women during ovulation is one factor in the complex set of variables that contribute to human sexual attraction in males. B.O. What determines when and toward when? What determines when and toward whom? Okay, I, I feel the pressure now. <laughs> Okay. Now that we've produced testosterone, we can see how it can affect various structures in the body by examining its various chemical forms. The process of manufacturing testosterone can be broken down into three easy steps. First, GnRH, or gonadotropin-releasing hormone, is produced in the hypothalamus. The GnRH then stimulates the anterior pituitary to produce and release luteinizing hormone, or LH. The LH travels to the testes where it binds to the Leydig cells, where a series of chemical events ends up producing testosterone. Okay. Now that we've produced testosterone, we can see how it can affect various structures in the body by examining its various chemical forms. Such as the liver, muscle, and adipose tissue bind testosterone directly and there is no need to convert it. Areas such as the skin, hair, prostate gland, and gonads bind to a variant of testosterone known as DHT which forms when testosterone reacts with 5-alpha reductase. The brain and bones bind to estradiol, which forms when testosterone reacts with aromatase. Now that we've produced testosterone and know how it binds throughout the body, we can examine how it affects sex drive. The cerebral cortex is known to stimulate the production of testosterone in the presence of females, even when males report not being attracted to them. Corticomedial areas of the amygdala can bind to steroidal horm hormones, triggering erections, feelings of pleasure, and orgasm. Furthermore, these signals can travel to the ventral striatum, an area of the brain known for signals of reward. Now that we've examined how testosterone can affect arousal, let's, let's see how low testosterone in males can affect declining sex drive. Now that we have examined how testosterone can affect sex drive, let's look at low testosterone and its potential treatments. There are two main types of low testosterone, primary and secondary hypogonadism. Primary hypogonadism is caused by damage or deformities to the testes, rendering them unable to produce testosterone. Secondary hypogonadism is when there is damage to the pituitary or hypothalamus, causing a disruption in the production of testosterone. Secondary hypogonadism is typically linked to age-related decline and can be brought on by age-related factors including obesity and prolonged exposure to stress. The effects of low T include loss of libido, loss of body hair, depression, obesity, and loss of fertility. As startling as these symptoms may sound, they're all common for aging men, with most men seeing a 1% per year decline in testosterone by the time they're 30. The only major treatment for low testosterone is testosterone replacement therapy, which can be administered with an injection or adhesive pad. However, the long-term side effects of testosterone replacement are up for debate. 